take that in your hours at home that you're working on Saturday. Get used to it. Don't you hear Kelsey you just stop doing so much of that? Yeah, this is going to take going to my fifth year in September. Really? No, I'm fasting. Well, stop. You can't use a new employee yeah. card anymore. Yeah, it's a real sort of Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> Good afternoon, fellow counselors and department heads. Good to see a big crowd out there today. I'm going to begin the agenda by calling the meeting to order. Linda will record the record of attendance. So before we start, Your Worship, I suggest that it would be in order for us to adopt a motion. A motion of council uh, delegating yourself as chair of this meeting in the absence of her of the mayor and deputy mayor. I so move. Question. Aye. All those in favor, aye. please say aye. Aye. Contrary aye. Oh, minded. Motion carried. Thank you very much, Cliff. So we have obviously the mayor and the deputy mayor absent with regrets. And the next item is declarations of conflicts of interest. And the next item is approval of the agenda. Are there any additions or deletions or changes? So moved. Moved by Sandy. Yes, Do we have additions? Oh, oh. addition. CIO. Oh, CIO has addition. You're too close. <laughs> <laughs> too late. Recreation report. It's, that's on there. That's in there? Yep. Okay. I will, uh, I'd like to add under uh, business, uh, EMO coordinator. Are there any other changes, additions? Thank you very much. So approval with the addition. With the addition, so moved. Sandy and Don. Question, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Contrary minded, motion carried. So under six are staff reports and the first report is uh, Jeff's report. And they have that as a, oops, you, have, you have that as a handout I think. Yep, there it is. Thanks Jeff. Are there any questions about Jeff's report or thoughts, opinions? Hearing none, we'll move on to Jack. You're okay? Sounds good. Yep. Hearing none, we'll move on to 6B, which is our fire department report. And uh, John Barrow is here. John, if you'd like to. Come on, you guys got to make me look good as a chairperson. Ask a question. <laughs> So, thank you very much, everybody. We'll, um, so the other one is the opera, next one. You're okay with both these uh, priorities and uh, dispatch report. So we'll move on to 6C, which is the operational services report. And there's none. Hi, Chad. I didn't submit uh, a written report uh, for this month, but I'd just like to bring you guys up to speed on a, a few things. Um, I think we can declare Ch the winter Chad, season. Chad, sorry. Use the microphone. Yeah. Is that good? Better. Um, I think we can declare uh, the winter season to be over. Um, I just wanted to uh, make note that uh, for this past winter season, we used approximately uh, 1,032 metric tons of, of salt. <clears throat> and just for comparison, um, the previous five-year average was uh, 1,258 metric tons, so um, didn't use as much uh, this season. We actually didn't have much of a winter until February, March, which was quite nice. What was the first number? Uh, one th what we used yeah. this year, 1,032 metric ton, and the five-year average previously was 1,258. 
Uh, we have the street cleaner out. It's been out for about three weeks. Uh, we're using it uh, part-time, uh, on a part-time basis. Uh, pothole patching, uh, we're performing um, on an almost daily basis with the asphalt recycler. Uh, the tender patch paving program won't start until sometime uh, in June. Um, last week we started our annual water main flushing program and it, we expect it to uh, take place and complete within three and a half weeks. Um, parks and facilities, uh, park staff are back on full time and are currently uh, cleaning up some parks and green spaces. Um, Frost Park Fountain is operational today, uh, as well as the loss to the sea fountain and the Lake Milo fountains will, will be installed by the end of this week. Um, our play structures at Gowdy Park uh, have been recently refurbished. We um, replaced all the wooden members of the play structures. Uh, if you want to go take a look, um, staff did an excellent job. Um, the banners are being reinstalled this week. Um, and on the waterfront, we have a target date of Monday, April 30th uh, to open up both the Killam and Rudders Marinas. And last but not least, the transit system. Um, the bus has been inoperable for some time now. We're, we're still having issues with uh, the air system on the bus. The, the air system controls uh, the suspension of the bus. It also kneels the bus, um, lowers the bus for uh, wheelchair uh, passengers. Um, good news is we've sourced the part. The part should be in tomorrow, so hopefully the bus will be in operation by the weekend. Um, but over the last two years, we've sort of taken stock of all the components that are giving us some issues. Um, a lot of them are uh, components um, that are parts of the air ride suspension as well as the ramp. And so what we've done, we've identified the parts that, are, that have a relatively short service life and parts that have been problematic, so we're going to start to stock these parts. So, so a little quick, you know, a little quicker turnaround time for getting the bus back in service. So, uh, we appreciate everybody's uh, patience up to this point. But the good news is uh, the new bus will not have this type of system. It's not going to be a kneeling bus. Hopefully, we won't have the same issues. Thanks, uh, Chad. Uh, are there any questions or comments? Well, my first comment would be I'm not sure that given the experience you've had or we've had with the current bus, which was bought new, that we won't have these kind of problems with. I've yeah. never heard anything like it. Yeah. I mean, normally well, yeah. I, clients would come to me and say, I want to sue somebody, mm -hmm. you know, for, for, for my losses. Yeah. Um, I, I, it's really incredible. But anyway, hopefully we'll get this resolved. I have a question. On the work on Cliff Street last year and the side streets, um, talk to Jan John Wainwright. Are we going to be doing some dressing up and cleaning up of some of the areas between the pavement and the lawns and so on? That's a question for Dave, actually. We uh, still have some more landscaping to do. Yeah, okay. So I, I had one of the neighbors, because I live in the neighborhood, contact me and asked me about that, and I did pass on what John had told me, that there was some money left in the budget or some, and that something will be done on that score. All right, good. And the other question was, uh, on Cliff Street, over the last 10 or 15 years, we've taken out several large over mature trees, and we ought to look at now that we've got that work done, replacing most, if not all, of those trees with new plantings. I don't know what's in the budget or not, or whether you have any. Okay. Well, I'll make a motion, uh, if I may. Uh, it's not on the agenda, but uh, I'll make a motion that uh, we ask staff to look into the possibility of doing some replacement tree plantings on Cliff Street in the new section that was uh, repaired. That's fair. Any more comments on that? Uh, on that I would like to make a comment. I'm, I'm glad that you're looking forward to the future that you're preparing, buying new parts, 
so that they're up and running and the bus is up and running faster. So I think that's a move in the step right direction yeah. for us. So that's a good move. Thank you, Don. I, I agree. I, I never recognized the bus until it's too late to wave <laughs> at the driver. Yeah. So I'm looking forward to the, uh, the bus, repaired yeah. bus. Absolutely. And I think, I think you're doing good work around town. All the boys are out. I see them on my walkabout putting up signs and uh, welcoming people to Yarmouth in French and English. And uh, so it, I'm very happy with all that good activity. Chad, thanks very much. Thanks very much. All those in favor, please say aye. aye. Contrary minded. Thanks, Wade. The next report is our planning department uh, report. Any questions or concerns over that? Hearing none, move on to 6E, which is the Asset Management and Infrastructure Renewal Report. Is that uh, Dave? Dave. I've read it, but yeah, you hit the highlights, Dave. Yeah. Uh, well, Bride Brook is still uh, in limbo for the moment until we uh, contact the last remaining property owner to get permission to cross the property to uh, before we can apply for a permit. Uh, Killam's Wharf, we've uh, getting quotations for temporary repairs to the rock wall until such time as uh, permanent repairs will be effected. Uh, we're Maud Lewis Trail or the Stars Road Trail from Maud Lewis to Pleasant Street is underway as far as design goes, uh, and we're coordinate trying to coordinate that with the. Uh, with the Pleasant Street and Stars Road traffic light upgrade design as well, so they mesh, mesh together. Uh, the public works generator is, we're waiting on a recertification of the main panel before we can make the connection in the building. Uh, we're, as I said, we're doing the Stars Road traffic light design right now, so we did uh, did the topo survey and we did the traffic movement counts in early April, so we're looking at patterns and the volumes there to come up with a strategy to uh, to improve the uh, level of service. And as mentioned previously, the uh, the transit bus uh, is on order, and we'll, we're uh, waiting confirmation for the the schedule to supply. Street cleaner tender just went out on the, uh, it's been posted on the provincial website, so that's going to, with a closing date of May 7th. And uh, I just, Leap Street uh, Garage, I just sent out an RFP for uh, proposals to do the de desi de design spec, or tender spec, I should say, for the demolition and then the uh, reconstruction of a new parking lot. Uh, Lake George, we're in the midst of, I ordered the new, uh, for the uh, stream maintenance flows, I ordered a new flow meter from the supplier and uh, getting quotations to install the equipment, so uh, that hits basically all the highlights, I guess. Um, thank you, Dave. Um, any questions or comments? The, uh, Dave, I, I have one. Number 12, the Glebe Street, Glebe Street Garage. Yep. <clears throat> that, that's right in back of the Lost to the Sea Memorial. Are we, how is that? Do we have a, that won't lose any of its impact when we remove the garage or that wall? Will it be, will the, 
the backdrop be changed somehow? Uh, we're going to have to come up with a design to to remove that without affecting anything and come up with with something that looks presentable. Sure. Um, not sure what department this is under, but I'm curious, uh, Jeff and uh, <clears throat> Dave and, and, and Jerry, um, <clears throat> the water, the, the leak at the corner of uh, Vancouver Street and Main Street that occupied, I think, a lot of costs, that, that came under the operational budget and, and, and it cost a lot of money, Jerry, didn't it? Hmm? That would have been the water utility. Okay. Right. But so, I, haven't, I haven't seen the bills coming through for all that yet. I think most of it was done by our own staff. Yeah. There was no original no. cost. It was a lot of manpower labor. Yeah. I just thought it, lo it looked busy that time, you know, hugely busy for a week or so. I'm just... So what they're trying to explain is that when they go to work on something like that, an emergency, our manpower resources are reallocated to that and some things that might have been done otherwise before that happened don't mm -hmm. get done until after that's fixed. Yeah. It, it's like snow plowing. We always used to have that going on, your budget and all this and that. Uh, storms come, storms go. Mm -hmm. Water leaks come, water leaks go. But we yeah. do, you know, most of that was in-house. So. Yeah other than the parts that had to be replaced. There's yeah. no great outlay of money on it. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Come on. Come on, computer. All right. Uh, I'm all set. If you guys are, have no more questions, thank you very much, Dave. Jerry, under finance department, any activity? Yeah, just a couple of things to let you know in case you get comments or hear comments about them. Uh, the My Account is up on our website now, and what that does, it's a link to uh, the customer portal. So customers with the water bills going out this week, uh, those customers will be getting their codes that they can sign up for their My Account. Um, and with that, it allows them to get their bills through by email, lets them go in and they can see their bills, reprint their bills, see history as far back as town suite, so three or four years worth of tax bills and water bills will be on there for them. So we've had a, a couple people um, kind of test the system out, myself included, uh, Linda as well, those staff members that live in town, we've signed them up. And we've been getting emails, and when a payment's applied in your account, you get an email saying a payment was applied to your account, that kind of stuff. So it's just, it's, it's quite user-friendly, and once it's set up, we think it'll work well for, our, for the residents and businesses. Um, if they have four properties or four businesses, they can sign up the one account and then take the other three accounts and link them to that. So you only sign up once and all four of your accounts would show up, or however many properties you have. So it's convenient that way. So. We've had a few people notice and call about it because it's up on our website now, but the codes haven't gone out, so the first set of codes will go out with the water bills this week. Um, another thing that's happened is Paymentus, as you know, that's the third party company we've contracted with to accept credit card payments. So people can use credit cards to pay their water bills or tax bills now, and we had our first tax bill come through today through Paymentus. So people see it and use it and actually this payer, it appears they were in Toronto and they pay bills for property here in town. So that's certainly a convenience for them. Uh, the other things working that we're just continuing to work on and that's just uh, auditors have been in, gone through some of the um, year end cutoff work. Uh, so we're now working on reconciling accounts, doing our own paperwork and our own files to be ready for them. They'll be coming back in July probably and continue just to tune and think about different ideas for the last few dollars on the budget. So that's kind of where the finance department, what we've been working on. Thanks a lot, Jerry. Any questions or comments? Sybil and I looked at the E account this morning. Mm -hmm. I hate to admit it, but I got error 404. I got to go back and see Sybil. <laughs> I feel embarrassed. Anyway, <laughs> I'm not sure what's going on. 
Any other comments or questions? Technology, not my strong strength. <clears throat> Um, the Economic Development Report, uh, Natalie, you've been a busy girl, Natalie. Yes. <laughs> There's not enough hours in the day for all the, for the projects that you have on the go right now. Go um, if if any, I can give everybody a little bit of two updates uh, in addition to if you have any questions on my report. So about, I just want to give you an up. Sorry. I was just going to say, don't got to mention about the vessel docking. Right. So my first additional update is on the small cruise ship that's coming in on May 2nd. So we know that the majority of the passengers are actually American travel agents. Uh, so this is a great opportunity for us to showcase the community, which I'm sure we will live up to that. Um, and that helps us to set the stage because uh, they have uh, preliminarily um, identified four bookings for next year, so uh, we want to make uh, this a good, uh, a good show. Um, we're also, on the same day, going to have a bus of uh, cruise ship visitors from the Shelburne ship. So they'll be visiting us and they'll be dropping by the museum for a tea and depending on what's happening at the lighthouse, uh, they might be able to go there as well. So it'll be, it should be a nice day in town. Let's hope the weather is good. Um, the, there is going to be um, a welcome center that's set up at the Killams Brothers building. And so um, we're going to have some cultural music and some um, art, artisan products for sale from our, hopefully from our uh, indigenous community and uh, from other areas. And we have circulated um, a one pager to all of the businesses in uh, from fountain to fountain, so that they're aware of it. And if they'd like to participate with any specials that they let us know, and then Neil will broadcast that. So I think we're I think we're in good shape. Thank you, <clears throat> Thank you very much, Natalie. Any questions or comments? Uh, Other so, more, if you yeah, wish. Yeah. So in addition, I just as you would have gotten the email. We did um, submit our smart city application yesterday. And uh, so we have to wait until mid-May, early to mid-May, for them to acknowledge that the application was complete and eligible to move forward to the next stage of jurying. So I want to thank uh, everybody, including Caroline, who's not here, who was a great champion of uh, starting the process. Um, and so let's cross our fingers that we get uh, at least selected for the next stage. That's almost worth a bet, I would bet, that we we're going to win that one. That was a wonderful presentation. Cliff? Natalie, can you, um, outside your report, but it's inside too. So on the uh, market assessment and trends analysis, is this thing public yet? No. It's, not, it's not. It's just. It was just well, for I'm internal ask a question. consumption. I don't know if I can because I'm confused by one thing. So perhaps you could, after you could send me an email or something. On page seven, it talks about a core population for the town of six thousand, and it speaks to a range of seats and averages, and it doesn't. I can't match that up to the other information on that page. Sorry, I fully I, I, understand what they're saying. Okay, I'll, I'll look at that page. And maybe I can speak to you after about yes, it. Yes, please. Because I, I may just be confused, frankly. Okay. I don't want to no problem, we can do that. Thanks. Sandy. Thank you. Uh, Natalie, I was just wondering, the ship that's coming in, can they dock at our wharf? No, so we had, uh, we have a bit of challenge with the particular, uh, that particular vessel. The it's it's it wouldn't our our wharf is too shallow by one draft, okay. uh, just because of the length of the time and the title. So the um, within our security plan that exists, um, the what we're doing is they're actually berthing um, off Yarmouth Bar, and they're going to zodiac the visitors to Lobster Rock haul out point to the shore. Okay. Uh, so this is something that they've done because this particular 
um, uh, crews does Alaska and uh, Iceland and different places where this is a normal thing that they have to zodiac. As a matter of fact, Shelburne, they have to bring boat people in from the, so um, that's, the, that's the plan. I think long term, um, in speaking with the marina manager, he is going to look at us having a second security plan, which would then allow us to dock at Killam's, uh, the marina. Okay, thank you. Uh, do we also have things planned for them to do as well? Yeah, so Ambassador Tours is the, the tour provider, and so they're working with our local agent, which is uh, David Solos. Uh, so what they have planned is a walking tour um, that will take them around town, visit the museums, have tea. Um, it's a very short time, and they want to shop, so we have to make sure there's lots of time for shopping. Um, and so basically the day, because it's, it's a very short window, and because they have to Zodiac right. on and off will be the walking tour, shopping, and the, well, the, the, the cultural music and such. So we're hoping potentially to have the cannon go off. Um, it might be noonish, but that, that's still up in the air. Okay, thank you very much. Wade. Thank you. Um, the second is a Wednesday. Is there any plans to have the uh, farmer's market open in that particular area? Yes. Th I'm s thank you for reminding me. They're open from 10 to 5. I know that this is short term and it's just something that crossed my mind at the moment and I apologize for that. And I don't mean to put you on the spot, but wouldn't it be kind of cool if we could do kind of almost a mini switch event? I know that there's a lot to it, but if you could with the farmer's market open, if, if the weather were proper, if we could get the music happening outdoor and maybe any other vendors who wanted to line up on Hawthorne Street, that area specifically, it could be quite busy there. Just saying. <laughs> I'm not trying to put you yeah, on the spot. That, yeah, I mean, if we had enough time to plan it, I mean, nothing's out of the, nothing's out of the realms. I think the main thing is for us to encourage the locals and our community that this event is happening. So. Um, although Yasta did a really good job of doing press release, on the 30th and the 1st, I'll do some more promotion um, to encourage the local residents, if they are able to, to come into town. Uh, because equally, the fun thing is people watching. Um, and that will encourage them to go to the farmer's market. Um, Holy Trinity Church has their breakfast on Wednesday mornings. And um, they may be um, doing an open house. So anybody would like to come in and look at the church and and see the beautiful architecture. So I think other people will start to piggyback on it. Good. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Wade. I know from a personal point of view, I just can't wait till we finish our governance board or and our study and our economic impact study. So looking forward to, the, to when they become available. Thank you very much. So now, under business, we had we had what you had an item there. I didn't write it down. Jeff, Jeff. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. So uh, the item uh, with with little notice, and I apologize for that, is uh, to do with our with our EMO coordinator. Um, the coordinator's been in the position for a uh, fair number of years, and uh, you know. Within the last year, his level of activity slowed for personal reasons. Uh, at a recent meeting, we discussed uh, the future, and he advised the, the board that this would be his last year. And so I advised him that uh, given the, the weather patterns and, and issues that we, uh, that we encounter, that I felt that we should, uh, I, well, I didn't feel, I told him that I would be recommending to council that we uh, end the appointment it's a council appointment that we end that as of September 1st this year and that we would have a contingency or a different plan in place heading into the winter and hurricane season. And so I would ask you uh, to recommend to council to set that date, uh, September 1st, for the end of the uh, current appointment for the EMO coordinator. So you've all heard uh, Jeff's recommendation. 
Uh, and yeah, just going to ask Cliff. So why September 1st and not August 31st? Uh, no particular reason. It, you you can choose you can choose uh, August thirty first. It was there was no um, particular thought one way or the other uh, about benefit salary so on. If you, I just wondered if August is September first would normally trigger a new pay period and bookkeeping and all that. August thirty first might avoid that. Go ahead, um, Your Worship. I'll, I'll uh, offer an amendment to the motion that the date be changed to August thirty first. Seconder. Question on the amendment. On the, on the amendment, that's right. Oh, I realize that. So all those in favor of the amendment as, Aye. as proposed? Aye. Aye. Contrary minded? Motion carried. On the original motion, all those in favor, please say aye. As amended, aye. aye. Contrary minded? Motion carried. Question for me, will this start the process of EMO and, and our, probably should bring it up on our other business of what we plan in the future for other organizations or joining together or all that, all that motion should start nope, the can, ball rolling now or does it start when he, when we fulfill uh, the 30, August, want. what did we say, August 31st? So it has begun already. Um, council is is on record as asking staff to proceed with looking at combining our EMO uh, operations. And as recently as this past Friday, the um, the remo coordinator from Lunenburg County was was in the area and uh, brief staff from the three municipal units on on some of the benefits and some of the you know issues and issues and process. And so my understanding, uh, Director of Finance and Fire Chief, I believe, attended that. And uh, there, is, there is a roadmap uh, way forward. And my sense from the Director of Finance, at least, was that uh, uh, everyone in attendance seemed positive towards, towards moving forward. So I expect we could have uh, a REMO in place uh, before August 31st. Thank you, Jeff and Don. Um, so under, <clears throat> under eight, we have correspondence. Previously distributed. There was um, one, oh, Cliff, sorry about that. Cliff, you go ahead. I should have raised these questions earlier, Your Worship, but um, so the planning item that we discussed earlier deals with amendments to the commercial C2 and commercial industrial zones, mainly involving, I think, Stars Road, from what I understand. Um, so where are we at on this? What action, the action we took is to refer it for, to, is it, what did we do tonight, to be honest? Is it referred to council or, or are we approving it? What are we doing here? The. Do you have the page there, Cliff? Well, I, uh, we had it under the planning department report, did we? Yeah. That's just the report. That's just the, That's just the report. Okay, because I, I started reading through it and I'm thinking there, there's a few questions that arise. So that's just the report. We'll be dealing with it at council. All right, thank you. So under previously dist uh, distributed or <clears throat> there's a, something to do with the, the Gaelic affairs and uh, they're maybe hinting that we should do a proclamation 
for the month. And then the other one, which I wanted to ask uh, Jeff about, is um, when my computer allows it, <clears throat> is from the Nova Scotia Justice Department. And uh, can you, when you get there, Jeff, at the, at the end, there's a letter which is provided pursuant to the Municipal Government Act. To yeah. So, Mr. Chair, the uh, the letter is is um, intended to uh, remain faithful to a memorandum of understanding between uh, the UNSM and the provincial government, where. Uh, there's a general agreement that any changes to uh, municipal funding or programs that affect municipalities, that municipalities will be given a year's notice in order to properly prepare for those changes. Uh, what this letter says is that they're reviewing the additional officer program. Uh, it is not specific in terms of what the changes might be. So it's a little difficult in terms of being able to plan. But what they are saying is they're reviewing the program. The additional officer program, uh, a couple years ago, a few years back, the province uh, gave every uh, RCMP detachment, every municipal RCMP detachment, an additional officer. So uh, those officers in our case, uh, one in the town detachment, one in rural, and one in Clare, they actually worked together. They created a, a joint unit and they worked together. Um, so it, it has given us some additional capacity there. This is kind of a heads up that it's being looked at. Uh, you know, I, I doubt they're looking at adding an additional additional officer. So the the concern might be that that they would be reducing reducing that. Now, one of the conditions when they when they created the program was that municipalities could not reduce their police force. Right, so you couldn't reduce one that you otherwise have under contract and replace it with the fully funded one from the province. So in effect, it's created a lock on the level of service uh, within municipal police forces across the province because if you want to reduce by one, the first one you lost was the one that was paid for 100%. So um, anyway, the program is being reviewed. That is uh, uh, your notice and uh, you'll probably learn more about that maybe at the spring workshop, at least get an opportunity to discuss it with your colleagues. Uh, thank you, Jeff. The, um, the other item under previously distributed, um, is that something that we should uh, say for a council meeting in, in May, or is that there is a, the ability to, to make a proclamation? We thought we had a sort of a rule that we wouldn't do any proclamations. Jeff? Uh, so, so we don't do proclamations. <laughs> uh, we, get, we get a lot of these and uh, we aren't alone in terms of municipalities that don't do proclamations. We do uh, put the information on our website through the town agenda so they do appear. This is on our website. People can find the information and, and I guess be informed and make uh, any, any informed decisions they need to as individual citizens. but. Uh, generally, the council does not uh, take a position on these on these things, and so we always send a letter back, advising them as much, and uh, so that's that's our process. So we're doing it automatically then. Sorry, we're doing it automatically. We're just we're doing it, and you're bringing you're bringing a special attention to it. Okay, thank you. <laughs> um, gee, 45, 45 minutes. I think, uh, are there any other items? Oh, yes. Sandy. Um, just before we adjourn, I just want to uh, say something to all our citizens that went out last weekend cleaning the town, and a special thank you to uh, the sea cadets who cleaned up Water Street. So thank you. I, I noticed. Had my bag with me that day, too. <laughs> any other questions or comments? It's important to note that that hockey rink is up and running um, and they got several kids that are already already involved in applying for uh, either baseball or summer soccer so that's good to see that the numbers are up already 
Don, thank you very much. Thanks for the correction. I appreciate that. Um, so thank you, everybody. A motion. For, um, motion. So thank you, Cliff. Thank you very much, everybody. Thanks, staff.